and welcome to the next part of Christmas Otome. The last time we got a lot of nice reading scenes with Garrett and, well, um, met an interesting doctor and um, Garrett vanished. Not like in an actual story sense, but more like in a gameplay sense. And I think it probably has to do with the fact that I already did all his events that I could at this point, so... <laughs> I, I basically need to wait until a certain event comes along so I can do the rest of this. Basically I need to actually enter Garrett's route. Because right now I'm, I'm actually not really. Look at him go. Uh, I guess I'll just visit the hospital again. I mean, I can't really do the spoiler routes anyway, right? Have to on um, have to do all the other routes first, I think. I leaned back on a seat and breathed out. Then I opened my eye to watch the children run around the courtyard of the hospital. I couldn't help but think of Kiru who had been doing the same but was still as lifeless as ever in his hospital bed. There were no signs of improvement. It wasn't surprising and yet that didn't make it less disappointing. Just like my investigation into the cause of his date. It wasn't like there was no information at all. It was trying to figure out which of it was relevant. Bad blood between corporations and old families, conspiracies, even talks of supernatural events, which I admit to having dismissed right out of hand before, but I don't quite have that luxury anymore. Yeah. Not that I didn't still take it with a grain of salt. One cursed item didn't mean that everything bad in the world was the result of magic. but. All of these things made it harder to weed out what was pertinent to my investigation or what was simply coincidence. For instance, his brother Azura being made into the heir of uh, Calder Estate. Coincidence? Part of some longer game? What kind of parents would give away their son to someone else to raise and then have another after? And it's not like either of them had visited him much since he was admitted either. I didn't exactly cast them in a favorable light. I mean, auntie and uncle are always busy, but who would drop everything to visit Mira? They actually did for her wedding. Mira might complain, but it was clear they loved each other even if they weren't very demonstrative about it. Kira's parents, on the other hand, I shook my head. But that also doesn't mean they were behind it, but being affectionate towards your kids doesn't mean you want them dead. Besides, there was no reason for them to want Kiru dead, right? I let out a sigh. My research had... has more dead ends than a horror game. Don't... don't jinx it. Don't jinx it, girl. You don't want this to become a horror game. Alright, Park. Sleeping early is a... Uh... Mick event? Huh. Don't really see how that would happen, but oh, whatever. Anyway, yeah. I'm pretty sure I pretty much um, went through all the Garrett events, yeah. So let's do more hospital stuff, I guess. Let's get teased more, I guess. I walked, in, walked into Kiru's room as part of my usual routine, only to stop when I noticed someone seated next to his bed. Cyan. Or Xian? Cyan. Hmm. Cyan. I will pronounce it Cyan for now. I had a wince at having unknowingly interrupted their sibling time. I'm sorry for intruding, I'll just... I gestured at the door awkwardly. That's fine. I kind of wish she hadn't said that. No, it would feel for worse to just leave. Well, okay then, don't mind me. 
so I busied myself with tidying up a little to try and lessen the weirdness. I didn't have a problem with her, but it wasn't like I knew her that well either. Plus, whenever I saw her, my first thought was about how she'd also been kidnapped when Kira ended up in this state, and then I would feel bad for all she went through. I didn't think she would appreciate my pity. I'd gotten all the way around to arranging the flowers and the vase, something I would like to keep for last, with no further comment from either of us. I smiled softly when I noticed there were daisies this time. <clears throat> are, you, are you the one that brings the flowers? I jumped a little when her voice cut through my thoughts. Uh, no, I'm not. And if she was asking, then it was clearly it wasn't her either. She noticed as though she expected that response. I restrained a sigh as silence descended once again. Would it be rude to leave, or have I stayed long enough? I almost convinced myself to just get out of here when she spoke again. So, you're a volunteer here? Yes. So much for running away. Why? Why does this girl scare me so much? Well, she doesn't emote a lot, I think. I mean, she's got some similarities to Siri, but she seems so cold in comparison, almost lifeless even. Still, providing some modicum of comfort to family members was also part of my duties, so I put it towards my main reason for staying at the hospital. He's Siri's family, and I know I can visit him as often as she, as she and I know she can visit him as often as she wants to, so it's one of the few areas where I can help her. She looked down at that, her, her, her hair obscuring her face from view. I see. This is just getting more and more uncomfortable. Get out, Maya, stat. Well, I should probably go now and give you some private time together. I was already halfway through the door when I heard her soft words. Thank you. I turned back in surprise before flushing her a bright smile. No worries. And yeah, there's still the vanishing of Garrett going on, so park. More MIG events for some reason when you go to bed early? Uh, I want to avoid doing the, the events for the others. To have more content in the actual routes. More money. Oof. Hmm. Whoop. Let me just save, just in case. Let's just do the hospital. Or should I just skip through? Hmm. I don't know. If I'm if I'm doing this the hospital stuff, if I'm stealing away content from the secret route, or if I'm not doing that. <laughs> Choices. Oh, let's go to the beach. And Frost Josephs. More hospital. Oh, whatever. Let's do more hospital stuff. Maya, would you be able to help with preparations for the Pete's Christmas party? I glanced up from the fire as I was pretending to look over while eavesdropping on Dr. Shippick discussing Kira's tests with the other nurses. <laughs> It was a regular fixture of the ward now that he's taken uh, Kiro's case, but from the sounds of it, there was still no progress. What sort of help is needed? Honestly, everything. It sort of fell through the cracks this year. I've been asking everyone with no luck. I looked at, ca at the calendar. There isn't really a lot of time left. I'm not sure I'll be able to... Dr. Shubba sm snapped the files he was holding closed. I'll handle it. What? The Christmas party. I'll handle it. Why? I can. Can't I want to do something nice for all the kiddos? 
Matron stared at him suspiciously. I couldn't help him. He'd already referred to the kids as gremlins, unchants, and little demons, and it was just today. <laughs> no pranks. Nothing to do with possible death. No scaring the kids. His eyes widened in mock innocence. Just what kind of monster do you think I am? I am going to, the, to be the best Christmas party they have ever seen. And absolutely no strippers. <laughs> of course not. We got the grudging nod of approval from the matron. Fine, but only because we're running out of options. He walked away, but not before throwing this gem over his shoulder. The strippers are for my private party at my place. Oh boy. Uh, yeah, seems like... Need to skip further to get to Garrett's stuff. Meanwhile, Maya's getting rich. Cool. I paused when I exited uh, Joseph's, only to see a familiar black town car. Siri? But she didn't say anything about coming over for today. Before I could question it too much, Baron came around from the driver's seat and opened the back door for me. I slid in beside Siri, still a little confused. What's up? Can't a girl want to spend time with her best friend? Uh-huh, you, you, you don't usually do sport at the moment. With my busy schedule, you should be honored by my pleasure, by my presence. Of course, your majesty. Tada looked at a giggle from, giggle from both of us before her expression turned melancholy. Shoot. I was so used to joking about it that I forgot would remind her of the way her cousins referred to her. Time to steer the conversation back on track. Seriously though, what's up? She shook her head slightly. Nothing major, I just had some rare free time and wanted to check up on you and... She made a sweeping gesture to indicate a bracelet. That holds. Ridiculous situation. Ah uh, yes, the cursed love bracelet. She shot me a look. Have you been okay? No more dizziness or fainting? It's actually gotten a lot better. Apart from the weird dreams and talks to visit certain place at places, not much is different. And you're sure it's not just psychological? You think John planted the idea and I'm not so skeptical to suggestion. It wasn't such a strange conclusion to draw, after all, it was a lot more believable than magic. I considered it, but the first sign showed up before that. Plus, I don't think my subconscious is good enough to have someone put these things together. Siri let out a long breath. Okay then. So, have you made progress in melting any hearts? Maybe? It's kinda hard to gauge. I mean, the bracelet uh, latched onto multiple candidates. Oh? Yep. I paste it on an innocent grin. Really? You're not going to say any more than that? Nope. Then here I was going to offer to help. Uh, Siri, you realize your idea of help is kinda scary, right? We've been going up a magic bracelet that could have terrible consequences. Pretty sure that's scary. Point, but I'd rather deal with one scary thing at a time. Okay, then I won't help, but I still want to know what's going on. I mean, it is kind of my fault that you're in this predicament. If I just thrown the bracelet out, none of this would have happened. Siri. I shook my head. Nothing's really going on. I'm trying to be a friend to maybe help them find love. Weren't you supposed to melt their hearts yourself? That part's a little unclear. But it would be safer, wouldn't it? Not for my heart. I muttered the words, but I knew she heard. She caught a contemplative look on her face. You don't want to face rejection a second time. That... 
so hypothetically, if possible rejection wasn't an issue, is there a candidate that you would want to pursue? Well, yeah, Garrett, of course. If I had to pick, oh, I would go with Garrett. Siri picked up a five from behind her. Hmm, a dependable co-worker, that sounds like something you would go for. She knows. Wait... Is that a file on Garrett? Well, he is one of my employees, of course I have a file on him. Yeah, but that isn't an employee file, is it? You research him because of the bracelet? She shrugged. I had to do something. No, if you ask me, your plan of attack should... Nope, I don't want to know what nefarious plot you have. Fine, then you have plausible deniability. What? No, I'm asking you not to do anything. She stared me down for a while longer before letting out a sigh. Okay, but we can at least have some girl talk about your crush? It's not a crush. I just think he's a great guy. I like spending time with him, even if he's super into exercise. You certainly look like you do. She was looking down at the files as she said it, which prompted me to look at it myself. How did you get photos of us together? You know I have my ways. Well, you certainly don't want her as an enemy, huh? I started her for a moment, my mouth opening and closing without making a sound. Then I dissolved into uncontrollable giggles. And in no way I was surprised. This was typical, Sammy. Some things really don't change, do they? I'll miss this. The thought came to me unbidden. Somehow, the more time passes, the more it seems logical to take my parents up to the offer and moving back with them after Christmas. See, I don't have time to be chasing some big romantic notion. It's easier to just set them up with someone else. Better to spend my last few weeks surrounded by friends. No new events, it seems. <laughs> uh, I guess we're working again then. Getting rich. Soon enough you don't need to actually go back to your parents because you're rich enough. But well, I don't actually know how high the rent is around here. <laughs> I feel like I'm wasting time, but that can't be it now, can it? I feel like I'm wasting my time, but it, that can't be, can it? Should be alright, but I still feel bad. Holy shit. Garrett, long time no see, boy. I shot Garrett another worried look. He'd been acting weird this shift, like something was bothering him. It probably wasn't any of my business, but I found myself subconsciously rubbing at the bracelet. I'll ask him about it after our shift. Despite my earlier resolve, I was having a hard time bringing it up on the walk home. I didn't want him to think I was being intrusive, after all. So, we'd reach my place soon and then the opportunity would be gone. Hey, Garrett, is everything okay? You seem a bit distracted today. He blinked at me for a moment before shaking his head. Uh, sorry, there's something on my mind. 
You want to talk about it? I heard it helps. Or not? Then he took a deep breath. Uh, well, I kind of ran into this weird girl. Oh, could this be love advice? I have a feeling it's not. I felt a little conflicted about, the, about this after admitting to Siri that I had feelings for Garrett, but I pushed it aside. You didn't really admit to it. He just said if you had someone to go for, it would be him. My reasons were still valid, and this could be a change to a chance to get rid of the bracelet. And it kind of got me thinking. Just smile and nod and wait like a good friend who's good at listening. <laughs> and that I kinda really like you? A question? <laughs> loading, loading. I was still nodding dumbly until what he said finally registered. Wait, what? I stared at him for a moment looking for any evidence of this being a weird joke, but there was none. He... what? Wait, some girl got you thinking that you like me? What the hell happened? Uh, well, I'm not sure how to explain it either. I just... I don't understand. She was so crazy that saying me looked great in comparison? I mean, there's plenty of great girls up there, you don't have to... Mm, that's not it. I like you. I could feel my haze heating up under the combined effect of his words on unwavering stare. Uh, okay, crap, can you just look the other way for a second? His head tilting to the side in an adorable way of confusion was really not helping. Uh huh. Uh, just do it, okay? This is too much for me to process, and I can't do it with you looking at me else and just like that. He burst into laughter. Uh, what? Earlier doubt aside, he really wasn't the type of person who would joke about something like that, right? Plus, he was laughing so jubilantly that yes, I was he was having trouble staying upright. He wasn't mean enough to find a joke like that so funny. He gave up on standing and squatted down the paveway with his arms wrapped around his stomach as he continued laughing. Uh, then he looked up at me with a smile so tender it, mel it melted my heart. Reverse frozen heart melting. Uh, see, this is a part of you why I like. This is part of why I like you. Any chance I had gotten of getting rid of my blush disappeared at those words. My sense of speech seemed to have packed its bags <laughs> as well. Ooh, 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 nice. He adjusted his weight forward into a kneeling position to take my head in his. So, since you haven't started running yet, or shouted that I'm crazy, do I maybe have a chance? Holy shit. Oh boy. His posture, his earnest gaze, and the feel of my hand in his. Crap, I f it's like, a, like having a knight in shining armor pledging his undying loyalty. I cursed myself for blurting it out without thinking. And he chuckled. If that floats your boat, then I don't mind. My heart was beating so fast that I was starting to worry. Oh, damn it! If you had this move with all those other girls, you have snagged one easy. Does that, does that mean I snagged you? I couldn't say anything in response when faced with his intense look. <laughs> so I pulled my hand out of his and buried my face in it. Okay, stop looking at me. My heart can't handle this right now. Uh, would, an an <clears throat> would an answer be faster if I looked the other way? <laughs> yes. I heard him get up and brush himself off. I waited a mom moment longer before slowly remove ma <laughs> Ah. I waited a moment longer before slowly removing my hands to look at his broad back. 
He's reliable, sweet, and has proven himself time and time again. I already knew the answer I wanted to give, but I couldn't find the words. What the hell do you say in this situation? Uh, I... Honestly, I think an okay. Or I accept. Or... I don't know. I should have read more of Miro's recommended romance novels. Oh, maybe not. Some of those lines are just... Uh, look, I don't really know what I'm supposed to say in this situation, except maybe I like you too? <laughs> yeah. He didn't say anything in response, and for a moment I was a little worried I said the wrong thing. But then I saw his uh, shoulders shaking. Are you laughing again? Uh, so, um, congrats. I guess you have a boyfriend now? <laughs> I hugged my pillow tighter as I thought about the events of today. Garrett likes me. It felt so surreal. A guy I like actually liked me back and we agreed to try going on a few dates. I smashed my face into the pillow and groaned. I wanted to ask someone for advice, but... Siri and Emma would both tease me about this. I didn't even want to think about the kind of advice Mira might give me if I called her either. And now we can finally get get more events and noise. And to commemorate this occasion. A new save. Uh, hey, Maya. Doesn't this character remind you of someone? I looked up from my book at the question. Uh, which one? I am trying to think about how I could pronounce that name. Anyara, the technophag. Fog. She literally ate anything technological she came across. Emma? <laughs> what? No, you! Me? My appetite is nothing. Not your appetite. Your mastery of attack. I mean, she could use the abilities of any machine she ate. If it was that simple to master tech, I'd already have my evidence. In the real world, however... I think my teeth would all crack. Garrett snorted. Uh, good point. We can't have that. You pushed a strand of hair behind my ear. Uh, are, you, are we really doing this right now? This is getting embarrassing. You don't actually see much of actual dating on Atomic Games. <laughs> Funnily enough. I like your smile too much for that. I blushed, pleased. I like yours too. He blinked. That's not a compliment I usually get. It's usually about my muscles. I gave him an assessing look. Well, those are very nice too. I reached out to caress his cheek near his mouth a little shyly. But a smile is a sign of happiness, so I like that more. His answering smile made the bolder than usual action worth it. <laughs> nice, nice, nice one. He placed his hand over mine and then placed the light pack on my palm. Holy, oh, good lord. Mm, then I'll try to smile more for you. And I blushed harder. How are you this smooth? It's not being smooth, it's just being honest. You... There was no way I was going to win against him. But then again, I glanced up at his doting expression. Was there... what was there to mind? Ugh, we're gonna embarrass everyone. That looks at the park. I'm already embarrassed. 
I smiled a little as I returned to Garrett's wave as he jogged past me. I found it a little cute that he did it on each lap. Even though Prince have appreciative looks he was getting left me feeling inappropriately smug. <laughs> He was running in only a vest, having given me her sweater to look after with smirk when I asked if he wasn't too hot in it. They could look all they wanted for me, and yet he was my boyfriend. <laughs> that's that's the right way of dealing with it. Not getting jealous, just being like, ha ha ha, look at that. That's my boyfriend. He's mine, not yours. But you can look how you want. That extremely ripped guy had chosen me. And even better than his body was his personality. Who knew I would ever be this lucky? I saw him coming up in front of me again and waved, expecting another wave back. But this time he slowed down just enough to place a kiss on my cheek before racing past. I froze, loading screen. Then I buried my red face in his sweater. Yep, I've used... I've used my whole lifetime's worth of luck to get with him. A grin broke out across my face. But it is so worth it. I'm kinda getting worried. Cause like, I definitely wouldn't mind if the game just kept on and on with those two just flirting at each other. But I know how things go. And that's usually not how things go. <laughs> There's always drum drama waiting at the end. By the way, when the heck uh, am I getting his next dreamscape? Like, I still have like two, don't I? Uh, guess I'll just go to Joseph since there's a scene here. When I left after my shift, I saw Don waiting outside. Hey Don, waiting for Garrett? Actually, I was waiting for you. Oh? I heard that you and Gar are dating now. My heart flooded at the reminder. He told you? It came up in conversation. Right, well, it's true. And the bracelet? I shook my head. It still won't come off. Don nodded like he expected as much. Guess it won't be that easy. He paused before fixing me with a troubled look. The curse, <clears throat> the curse isn't the reason you agreed to date him, is it? It wasn't too surprising that he might doubt my intentions considering the whole curse thing. It's not. I generally like him. Good. He likes you too. Don't mess around with him. Don't worry, I won't. Don nodded satisfied. Well, that's all I had to say. I wish you both the best. With that, he turned around and left. Short as the encounter had been, I couldn't help but feel warm knowing that our relationship had, had the approval of Garrett's closest friend. Hmm, and I guess I'll just go to Joseph's again. I glanced at Siri, Don, and Baron, still disbelieving that we were doing this once again. So, status report? I'm fine, the bracelet is still stuck. I lifted my hand and pulled the uniform sleeve back to make it visible to everyone at the table. Siri pursed her lips unhappily before turning to Don. Do you have any useful information this time? Um. <clears throat> Uh, lots of contradictory stories, but I've compiled a list of the most common ele elements. The first is the dreams. All the stories mention dreams in some way. It ranges from just having vague dreams about a person to being able to enter and manipulate the dreams yourself. You mentioned having odd dreams since you put the bracelet on, right, Maya? Uh, yeah, they seem like the first category, though, at least from what I can remember after waking up anyway. There was some speculation that the dreams may be, may be the result of the soul wandering into the subconscious or something, and he trailed off looking uncomfortable. 
and that the soul can become more and more untethered from the body, but it could lead to the forceful separation of the two or being trapped in the dreams. If anything happens to Maya, you will be a dead man, father's pet or not. That was said so calmly that I couldn't doubt her uh, words. Looking at them, he didn't either. Even Varan looked worried. I cleared my throat uncomfortably. Right. Well, what was the next thing on the list? The next was related to the mood or personality of the wearer. There were reports of them being more prone to periods of depression or mood swings when wearing it. Speculation was that it was either related to the candidate's own moods or the bracelet itself affecting the host. Siri shot me a worried look. I couldn't blame her, it wasn't like I was the most bubbly person before this. But I felt fine, didn't I? I mean, I did have my own anxieties, but I had them even before this. Some, some said that the bracelet was using the host's positive energy to counteract and candidate's negative. But then why would have been latched onto me? Wouldn't someone with a positive outlook have been better? Perhaps it doesn't have a choice of who puts it on. After all, it is an inanimate object. Any host may be better than none. Do we have any indication of what the hosts were like before the bracelet? It could be the opposite, that it's attached to people who are already prone to such moods. I looked at Siri. Am I moody? No, you're possibly one of the most stable people I've ever met. Stable and moody aren't exactly mutually exclusive, though. I can still be stably moody. I'm not sure what that looked like. Maya, I can assure you that in the times I've gotten to know you, you have always played a level-headed temperament. Much more sincere than many other women. Couldn't that just mean that there's something with your f frame of reference? Are you suggesting something there? Siri sent him a wilting glare. Staying silent is indeed a wise move in this situation. Usually it takes years of marriage before a guy realizes that. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, there's no clear answer to why it chooses hosts, or if it even does. As well as if it actually changes their moods. I mean, I just... Just knowing your curse could put a damper on your mood, and there are still stories with lots of different hosts. So, in the end, this is some other dead end. You're just really flighty about your own... You're just really flighty about your owners. The bracelet pulls the stoic ring, or just amused by my thought. Was there anything else on your list, Don? Uh, some minor things, but none of them came up as often. There were some references to a spirit, but those were rare. And also something about ice, but that one is unclear. I think it's a reference to the whole frozen heart part of the curse. Does ice mean anything to you, Maya? Well... Yeah. No, except maybe... I screwed up my face thinking about it. The dreams felt cold, I think. Listen, this isn't going anywhere. She sighed before fixing me with a look. So, how's your love life looking currently? Anyway, Joseph's. Where are you, Garrett? Oh, there you are. <clears throat> hey, Maya, are you free after this? Yep, need some help with something. Uh, actually, I was thinking we could go out on a date. Oh. The idea that we were dating was still new enough that it caught me off guard in a good way. So, we'll meet outside after this shift? Yes, that, that works. He shot me a sweet smile. Great. I could barely concentrate for the rest of the shift. The knowing looks he sent me whenever our gazes met hadn't helped either. 
Even when I was changing out of my uniform, I had been thinking about the date and wondering what we are going to do. I was glad I kept up the habit of carrying a change of clothes, despite cha changing at home most of the time. Still, if I had known we were going on a date, I could have bought something nicer to wear. It was our first official date after all. What if it ended up being something fancy? Well, that it required specific clothes or exercise clothes. I don't think he would choose something like that as a first date. Thankfully, those worries were all allayed when I saw Garrett come out dressed casually as well. Okay, good. It's not someone with a dress code at least. Ready to go? Yep. We walked along the streets, passing many stores and food places along the way, and I couldn't help but wonder where we were going. A movie? Dinner? I was about to ask when we stopped outside one of the stores, and I looked up to see the arcade. The arcade? Yes, I'm happy with that. Must have taken too long to respond because Garrett furred his brow. I thought you might like it since you like gaming, but we can go somewhere else if you don't. The arcade is fun enough. It's just there's... Where I live there aren't any arcades. I like it. Now come on. What should we try first? I smiled up at him and his face relaxed. Uh, whichever you want. I don't have much experience with these things. I looked at the games before grabbing onto Garrett's arm and steering him towards the counter. Come on, tokens are this way. The board attendant looked up as we approached. 30 tokens, please. Might as well start with a lower number, we can always get more later. I was about to head over the money when Garrett stopped me and handed over his over instead. My treat. You sure? I'm loaded. I'm the one that invited you out. Alright, well I'll pay for the food later. You... I didn't give him a, a chance to protest, instead taking the tokens and pulling him along. Now let's get to playing. I don't want to argue when it comes to when we could be playing. La la la. Did you decide what you wanted to do first? Yep, we've gotta do the old school physical games. You probably have an easier time with them. Plus, the whole point of coming to an arcade was to play the games you couldn't get an em emulator for, right? We started with the ball toss game and I couldn't help but admire his skills. You're sure this isn't your first time? I mean, you, be you beat a high score and it's been there forever. He shrugged. I have good hand-eye coordination. Godly hand-eye coordination more like it. It's like watching a video game character with auto-aim on. Speaking of... Let's try the shooting games. Give him a moment to familiarize himself with the gun attachment before putting, it, putting in the tokens. I watched an hour as he tore through the enemies effortlessly. My poor player 2 had barely anything to do. Not that I was complaining, I'd never gotten very far in these games before, so it was cool to see how the story played out. Once he got to the end, the leaderboard shot up with some fanfare. Oh, you topped the leaderboard! What's this? You put your initials so others can see your achievement later. Three characters max, though. Three characters, huh? Use this gun to select his three characters. G plus M? Ah, oh, that's kind of... Kinda... That, it's, it's cute. Warm thrush to my cheeks. This public display was a little embarrassing, but it was also charming. Looking at Garrett, he didn't seem the type, and yet he was really sweet. Uh, what's next? Hmm, racing? Let's do bike racing. Couldn't help but think he would really look... He would really... Ah, he would look really good on one. Glancing at him straddling, straddling one, my sus suspicions were confirmed. I quickly turned front to face the screen as I felt my cheeks heat up again. Does this game also have a leaderboard? Yes. 
I had chanced another glance at him and the determined expression on his face had my heart speeding up. Since when do I have such, such extreme tastes? Don't you just like it when he does his best? I was still trying to calm my heart back down when the race started. It was only after a few laps that I looked away from my screen to check how he was doing. He finished? How? I looked back at the screen and sure enough, I still had a couple laps left even though I hadn't crashed or gone off-road. So how? Was that even possible? I finished off my laps, but that question kept me going around kept going around in my mind. Was it a was it a glitch? I got off my bike with a furred brow since the race drew to a close. Uh, what's wrong? Let's switch bikes. If it's a glitch, I want to see it. Um, sure. With that, we traded bikes and started another race. Kept my eyes peeled for anything out of the ordinary, but the game proceeded the way I was used to. In frustration, I looked over at Garrett's scream, 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 nah. It's not a glitch, it's him. He was speeding past the AI rider skillfully. It was amazing to see the way he controlled the machine, sticking close to the side lane and using their slipstream. But that doesn't explain how he managed to lap them all. I was so engrossed in watching his race, I forgot all about mine and finished at an ignomer ignomerous last place. Could only stare as he cheerfully steered the bike to type in another G plus M. There were practically question marks around his head when, it, when he saw my blank expression. And don't mind me, I feel like I've witnessed something that can't be naturally explained or copied. He still looked confused, but then shrugged it off. What now? After the show of physical prowess, I glanced over at the big machine that took pride of the place of the arcade. With my own abilities, I've always avoided it, but I couldn't help wanting to see him try it. Let's do the dance game. We walked over in front of the, uh, to stand in front of it. Uh, how do you play? Uh, the moves show up on screen and you've got to do them with the right timing. Going to warn you now that I suck at this, though. His brows furred. Uh, we don't have to play it then. I'm not that great at dancing either. Come on, we should at least try it once for fun, though. He shrugged. Uh, Alright. I put in the tokens and chose an upbeat song. As expected, my reflexes weren't good enough to hit half the notes, but it was still pretty fun. See, I told you I'm terrible. I caught myself up as I glanced over to Garrett in the side of the screen. He broke the record. I was so shocked that I stopped moving entirely and just stood there staring. He just kept hitting, kept hitting perfect note after perfect note. Despite that he didn't look like didn't look like he was having trouble at all, the song I chose might not have been the hardest, but it wasn't an easy one either. How was it that he didn't miss even a single note? It was only after he inputted G plus M into the leaderboard and turned to me that I finally came back to myself. What? You you liar! He blinked at me. What did I lie about? <clears throat> you call that not great at dancing? He snorted. That's not dancing, it's just stepping on keys with the right timing. Now if you wanted me to do the salsa. My brain promptly died at the thought of doing the salsa with him. I shook my head to get rid of those images. Let's play some video games. Let me gather back the pieces of my pride with something I'm actually good at. I may have thought that, but with how the other games went, I was still expecting him to be great at those too. He chose a two-player game I was familiar with and put in the tokens. Use the joystick to move and press the button to attack. Alright. I blinked when I saw the way Garrett's character's half plummet. Um, you gotta dodge the attacks. I am trying. Even as he said that, the death tone chimed out. He looked a little disappointed as he stared at a continue prompt. Uh, why don't you put in another token and resume? He nodded and did so, but soon enough he met with a similar end. 
After a third try, he shook his head and didn't try to continue. Could it be? He's bad purely... He's bad at purely digital games. Don't worry, I'll avenge you. He smiled at my declaration. Gift him hell. With physical encouragement, I gave the game my best effort and practically flew through the levels. I turned to him, beaming when I made it to the end, and beat the existing record. record. You really did send him to hell. His proud expression was even more re re rewarding than beating the game. I looked back at my name entry and screamed and made a decision. I added my own G plus M to the leaderboard. Any embarrassment I felt was worth it just to see how pleased it made him. Come on, let's smash some more records together. No. Alrighty then. It's already been long enough, so let's end the part here. Next time we will probably see a lot more flooding of those two. And probably also some plot and I hope I get to actually um, see the dreamscapes soon enough because I'm nervous about them. So yeah, until then, goodbye!